Hi Taurus, welcome to July and welcome to Starkeology Tarot. I am Desi, I will be your Starkeologist for this month. Um, I'm very excited to dig deep and f figure out, <laughs> first of all, what am I saying? Um, second of all, figure out um, what is the, the message from Spirit, from Source, that will best align you with your highest self and highest path. Um, I'm looking for only messages that will enlighten, uplift, encourage, support, strengthen you, um, and really remind you of who you really are, how magical you really are, what you're actually capable of. So if this sounds good to you, please keep watching. I also encourage you to watch for your other placements. This um, is good for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Um, our sun signs are only a piece of the puzzle that is each of us. Um, so if you want a more accurate understanding of what July is going to be looking like for you, I highly encourage you to watch your other placements. Um, that being said, some of this will resonate with you and some of it won't, and that is okay. That's great, in fact. What resonates with you is what is specifically meant for you and what doesn't, that is meant for someone else, so just let them have it. Um, if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do that now. This is what lets me know that this is helpful and that you guys are appreciating, appreciating this um, and liking it. <laughs> and it encourages me to keep doing it. Um, is that everything I have to say to you? I think it is. Uh, okay. So I'm going to take a moment and tune in and shuffle. Uh, feel free to use this moment to set an intention for this month, this reading, um, or ask a specific question that you want answers about from this reading. Um, there's nothing left to say. Let's do this, Taurus. Taurus, um, July is leading up to a clean slate for you. Um, you are spending this July and moving towards just a complete wiping of the slate clean, a new beginning, a fresh start, um, because the, the month is, the outcome of this month is the Knight of Pentacles plus the Fool. And this is, um, Like any beginning, it's a leap of faith. But you are really, this is not something so spontaneous that it's, even if it looks foolish to other people, it's truly not. It's actually grounded in a great deal of thought and careful decision making. Um, this new beginning, uh, sure, other people might judge you for it. This is what happens with the fool when the fool um, appears, you know, with any risk, with any risk taken, part of that risk is risking being called foolish or being, excuse me, having other people judge this risky move that you are making, um, especially the people in the town behind that you are leaving behind. You're going out into your own wild and known, exploring your wilderness in some way, and. Um, it's completely natural that there are people who fight that urge all the time. And when they judge you, they're saying much more about themselves and about their own resistance to going and taking a, a leap of faith or jumping off the cliff. Being paired though with the Knight of Pentacles here, um, knights are all about quests and action, taking action. And, um, of all the knights though, the Knight of Pentacles is the only one who is, you can see, standing still on her horse. It's it's not um, 
of all the of all the nights oh my god i'm so sorry i'm yawning nonstop. um of all the nights the knight of pentacles is the least impulsive this knight is in this this is not a sprint for the knight of pentacles this is a marathon it's all about long-term gains long-term vision and so this being paired with the fool it's like this is not something spontaneous that is coming from nowhere this is not like um oh i'm just you know i'm doing this with no thought or no planning for the future this is this beginning has full planning for the future this is like um just because it, it is risky does not mean that you haven't thought it through thoroughly and that um and that it doesn't have the potential it doesn't have legs it doesn't have um the potential to to serve you for for much longer than it takes to jump off the cliff which is a split second taking the risk itself is a is a split second but the journey that follows is very very long and you see this it's like this this journey is something that you are in it you are in it for the long haul and you are looking forward to that you have this optimism about it and this this faith that we ought, we only see with the fool the fool is zero it is it is the first card in tarot the first card in the major arcana and with that zero that magic oval comes that it's it's reminiscent of the cosmic egg um symbolism which is all about uh holding untapped potential and realized potential at once and so all of it is it is wrapped up into this moment for you it's like you you are a complete beginner but also you are beginning with some sense of some wisdom of knowing where you are going to end up and that's very powerful it seems foolish because you can't logically explain it but it's very very powerful and it's very intuitive um there's also a, a complete lack of ego in this move um zero the nothing comes before the fool so the fool has no past the fool has no baggage the fool is not allowing old emotional wounds or bias or experience to get in the way of um of this decision and of this action because of course all of those things feed into into our decision making and our action taking all as a mechanism of of protecting our ego and the fool has no ego to protect the fool is a child the fool is an innocent it's as the fool that is the best way to ever begin anything is from that fool mentality of of really not um not doing something for for the wrong reasons but simply for the joy of doing it and and answering the call um this is intuitive for you but it's not emotional for you that's there's a difference there's a difference between feeling it very deep but it bypassing um the parts of our emotions that that get really complicated and complex when when we start when ego gets involved in it this is beyond ego this is this is soul level not heart level if that makes sense um it's gut level it's past the heart it's it's to the gut it's um you feel it deeply but that doesn't mean that you're getting emotional about it in any way and it's important that you listen to this um, so all of July is really leading up to that outcome for you. Um, the situation that you are in right now is the actual decision. The, the decision um, that you are making regarding this new beginning, regarding this first step, regarding this leap of faith. You need clear thinking right now. And I think some of you have actually found yourself in a place of clear thinking. Like this isn't like a call for, um, for some of you, this, th these, this card appearing is like tarot is, the cards here are, are, are calling for you to, to make a decision. They're calling for you to clear your head so that you are able to be in a place where you can make a, 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 a grounded, um, strong decision. For others of you, you just find yourself in this position right now. You find yourself suddenly in a place of clear-headedness. 
over something that was very cloudy before. Now you're in this place where it's very, it's suddenly very, very clear and you actually have a bird's eye view of what you want, of your vision, of the, the adventure, the quest that lies before you. Um, you're able to, you're daydreaming a lot. You know, there, there's an opera, the, you're daydreaming about this decision. And I think if you're, if you're still in hemming and hawing about the decision itself, look to those daydreams. See what is the thing that you are daydreaming most about? Which scenario are you daydreaming most about? And how do you feel in, in that scenario? Um, versus the other scenarios that you might be worrying about. There's a difference between falling down a worry spiral and visualizing versus daydreaming and visualizing. One is uplifting and one is completely um, um, gosh, what is even the word? It's it's um, repressive. It's it's weighing you down. Whereas one lifts you up so you can fly you feel like you have wings when you daydream with the when you daydream about the decision that is the one that you should make um the trouble with the two of wands that sometimes comes into play is is that you run the risk of really dreaming too small or of dreaming within the limitations of somebody else and I see that as being an issue for you because in the action and advice position, we have nine of swords plus the emperor. So I think for some of you, you might find yourself daydreaming or running the risk of really worrying within someone else's limitations and that someone else, there is some sort of dominant force in your life. Um, some sort of dominant personality, and it might be an actual person, this father figure mentality who is really um, strict, feels strict to you in some way, feels limiting to you in some way. They're trying to impose their way on you and you feel the limitations of that. Maybe at this point though, you're not even aware of, its, of this person's impact on you. You've become so accustomed to moving and living within this person's limits because this person is a very controlling presence and you you don't even question it anymore. All your dreams have just, your dreams, your worries, everything that happens inside you, your entire inner world has shifted in order to fit inside their world, not inside the huge expansiveness that is you. Um, not inside the huge potential, untapped potential that is you. Um, it's like you are dreaming inside someone else's um, realized potential, someone else's limits, someone else's very strong beliefs about what is even possible to be realized. And that's never a place to dream from. Uh, you know, if we all dreamed from within the limits of, of what already is, of the, the rules of, well, this is how it, it is, this is how it always has been. There would be no change. <laughs> there would never be any change. Uh, we'd all think far too small in order for that to happen. Um, so this is a time for you. It's like challenging you to dream outside of someone else's box. And this also, this presence, this emperor presence, it might not be a specific person in your life, but rather just a, a general force, uh, an influence. Oh my goodness, well, I'm so sorry. I gotta drink some water. Um, this emperor might be an incredibly um, oppressive influence, um, father-like patriarchal influence. Um, that's that's more general more broad this isn't this isn't boiled down to a single person in your life but rather it's just the rules of society it's how um your society functions and you feel a bit suffocated by that maybe you feel there's something there's some aspect about that right now that is particularly suffocating 
to this decision that you need to make, um, to this beginning that you, this beginning that you want to create, um, this new path that you want to take. There is something suffocating, limiting, this over overbearing presence that you feel like you need to make your decision uh, within these these exterior rules that don't even belong to you, that you haven't even set for yourself, but you feel very pressured to follow these rules. You feel um, you, like you don't want to rock the boat, you don't want to upset this person or this structure, um, you don't want to be labeled an outcast, you don't want to be seen as someone who is, uh, you don't want attention on you. And that, I think that also is part of the beauty of this Fool card, is like, this is not, again, this beginning is not about ego. This is not about doing something for show. This is an honest, um, this desire to, to take this risk, take this leap into the wild unknown here is um, completely detached from your ego. It's something that is coming from a much greater part of you and you're not doing it for show. You're doing this, you could be doing this completely unobserved. This is truly for yourself. And so the possibility of having unwanted attention on you while you do this, the unwanted attention, the un unwanted watchful eye from you know people in your life that you don't want to ex upset or a community that you don't want to upset or um, a, a society you don't want to upset, a society that you don't want to be labeled as um, you know, a quack I'm hearing, a quack or a weirdo or um, an outcast or um, just someone who is, is different from the rest, different from the status quo. You're, you're not doing this for the sake of being labeled a rebel. You're doing this because you're being obedient to a new ruler and that new ruler is you. So the fact that this is paired with the Nine of Swords tells me that you really are worrying about this. This is the up at 3 a.m. card. You are um, agonizing a bit over this decision and, and you're really in your head about it too. Um, the other, the, another meaning of these two cards being together, I mean, this was actually over this. It's like literally interpretation. You are worrying over this this influence. You are worried about this influence. Um, but I think another interpretation is that you need to actually gain control over this worry. Um, you need to make this worry, make your thoughts bow down to you. It doesn't work the other way around. You are not ser here to serve your thoughts. Um, you are not here to appease your, your thoughts, to appease your brain. Um, your brain is a tool for you and your brain is here to serve you um, So when it throws in thoughts that you're like that is not helpful to me You have a choice to say no, I'm not going to go down that path. That is unhelpful. That is uh, That weakens me that is not strengthening me. That's discouraging me um, it's not your brain calling the shots here. It's not your brain making the rules. I think for some of you, this is a this is a challenge to break outside even the structure of your own mind, um, the very oppressive quality of your own of your own mind, and the, your the the oppression that comes along with the way you think about things, the way you you think through things. Maybe you are the one that you that is censoring yourself the most. You are the one that is li limiting yourself the most. The irony there, oh my God, the poetry. Like this is, um, you haven't sworn allegiance to that voice in your head. That voice in your head does not rule you. There's also another element here with these two cards that I want to get to, which is, which is simply about the aspect of stability and we the emperor card i mean the reason why we seek society why we seek 
civilization and order and structure is because it offers us a sense of stability and security. But when that order is diseased to begin with, when there is a flaw in the order, um, for example, government is great unless you have a dictator in the highest seat of government and then government fails its people. Um, so so I think a question here, and this might be leading into why you are so finding yourself in maybe worry spirals lately and you're really agonizing over this and torturing yourself in, in your brain. Um, there might be something in your life right now that you have always equated with providing you security, something that you've always thought, this makes me feel safe, this makes me feel stable, I need this in order to be secure. And something is happening now where that is shifting and you're realizing that that system or that person or that thing um, is not offering you real security. They're limiting you in a way that makes you feel safe because it makes your world feel smaller and you can know how big your world is, you know the space that you're in, but um, you're not really seeing that sense of stability for what it is. It's not true stability. Um, it's just something you've gotten used to, something that you've become conditioned to, so it's what feels safe. Just because it feels safe doesn't mean it is safe. Just because it feels stable or secure doesn't mean it is stable or secure. Um, and I think that, that for some of you, there's a direct relationship between this thing and how you are going about this decision-making process and visualizing your, your path forward, visualizing your new beginning, dreaming, um, over the cliff you know you can't take a step you can't take a leap of faith off the edge of this cliff and when you think about it only be visualizing it up until the edge of the cliff itself dream what is beyond the cliff dream what is beyond the point where your knowledge stops that's what helps write the book for you moving forward. That is what helps write your story for you going forward is what you think about it, what you visualize, what you expect from it. If it is just a completely empty void and you're stopping, your, your daydreaming, your imagining is stopping at the edges of that box, then yeah, sure, in one breath, it's very open-minded. It's great to not, not, it's great to not, um, to be, it's great to be that open-minded that you're like, this could be anything. But if you want to, if you want the experience to be one of love and joy and fulfillment, that is the one thing that I think is safe to expect from it or is safe to visualize from it. And then let the mystery remain in how those things manifest for you. Um, I think it's also very important and proactive to do that because it's hard to just have a full, to, to be thinking about something, thinking ahead is about something and really have nothing, have there just be a void in when we, how we envision it and how we look forward. I don't think that that's something we naturally do. And I think it's much more normal and common for human beings to be worrying about the thing that we don't know about. Um, so if it's a choice between worrying about it or um, seeing your fears play out versus seeing your greatest dreams play out, make the conscious choice to be seeing your greatest dreams play out over the edge of the cliff, beyond the, the um, walls of that box. Because it's what you think about it that does create the experience itself. It's the first step towards creating and writing the experience itself. Um, on that note, Taurus, I hope this was helpful. What, how, if there is any advice that I have just to, to end on here, it's get control over this. This is not you. 
this is not you. Oh my God. And that's another thing that is coming to me here. Whatever voice this is, this, this voice in your head that is leading you down these paths of worry, leading you down these spirals, um, that is stealing far too much of your attention and focus and time and emotional energy. Whatever voice is doing that, it's possible that that voice is this voice. It is this whatever rep, whether it's someone in your life, it's it's your father's voice that has made its way burrowed into your head or someone, some figure of authority, someone that you have looked up to in your life or you valued in some way or um, a community, an organization, uh, an entire society, the voice of, of your society, of your culture. Figure out whose voice that is, because it is likely it's this emperor in your head. Um, and they are not a ruler in you, in you or of you. They are not native to this space. You invited them in, you can ask them to leave. Taurus, best of luck with this new beginning. This is very exciting. Um, I wish you clear a clear head for decision making. I wish you creativity in imagining what lies between this portal that you stand in now um, that leads to this future path, that leads to this magical adventure beyond the cliff. And remember that whatever this is you are starting, this is this is something that um, you're in for the long haul and uh, there are going to be ups and downs to it and that's the beauty of knowing that it is a marathon and it's not a sprint. Um, there are ups, natural ups and downs and um, you're here for the journey. Thank you so much. It is so beautiful and wonderful to connect with you. I'm so grateful for it. If you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. Um, and I'll see you in August, I hope, if not sooner. I love you, Taurus. Goodbye.